hi guys welcome back to my channel i am shelby of shelby in the book club and in today's video we're going to talk about my quarter one wrap up so as you guys know i usually do a monthly wrap up video um for every month and i did not do that for february and march because life was whooping my ass y'all like life had me in the corner and she was just popping me in the mouth the way will was up there slapping uh chris rock it was it was a mess girl it was it was y'all it was a mess okay <laughs> so i didn't do as much reading which in turn i did not do a wrap-up video um so expect april for there to be a regular regular smegular wrap-up video but if you would like to hear what i did read for quarter one and what my stats are here you go before we go don't forget to like comment subscribe and share you just been hiding me away to yourself and not sharing me with your other friends that like to read and such you got to stop that we have to grow our family okay <laughs> here you go guys okay so boom i read 10 books so far this year um, and I am not proud of that because I feel like last year, by March, I had read like 15 books, <laughs> which maybe not. Maybe I am on pace for myself because usually towards the end of the year, I catch myself up. Um, but my goal for quarter two, which is what we can start with my goals for quarter two, my goals for quarter two are to catch myself up. Um, so according to Goodreads, I'm eight books behind, um, so if I read eight books this month, then I can catch myself up. But I'm not really too concerned about being eight books behind. I just know as I'm trying to like get myself back on my feet, catch up on things, get back organized again, that I am a better person when I am reading one to two books a week. Um, so I need to do that for myself. Like when I journal daily, I am a good person. Maybe not daily, but like every other day, I'm a better person for it, right? When I'm reading one to two books a week I'm a better person for it um so it's just a matter of me realizing that and actually following suit because when I don't <laughs> I always feel bad and I know y'all are probably thinking like girl it's just reading it's not just reading like it's a part of my mental health on top of the fact that like I've made a business out of it but I really 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 enjoy it it really 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 makes me happy and it brings up the idea for me that or just the thought process of I make so much space for all of the other things that make me uncomfortable why don't I make space for the things that bring me joy and make me better you see so I'm learning I'm growing I'm doing those things okay so my goal is for quarter to to catch myself up and to um read at least like five to eight books a month that'll get me to where i need to be um and then we can go from there there are things that i want to read there are books that i need to catch myself up on um it's a whole lot i just i let a lot of stuff fall to the wayside the first quarter of the year and now I have to reap the percussions of that, right? The, the reap the percussions. That's not, I, I don't know why that sounds wrong to me. I think it probably is wrong. What I'm trying to say is, is I didn't do a bunch of stuff that I was supposed to do. And now I have to make up for that and so on and so forth. And I'm figuring it out. So that's the goal for quarter two. Quarter two is to get my shit together. Lack of better words. So let's go through the books that I read in... The first quarter of the year will go in order i will put books on the screen so that you guys can see the title just about all of these you can get from shelbyinthebookstore.com if you guys are looking for any of them so first we had the stationery shop which y'all know i did a review on that and i absolutely love the stationery shop it was a love story a coming of age story it just was so good if you want to see the review um, I will tag it in the video somewhere so that you can go watch that if you have not already. It was just so good. Um, and I believe I gave that a five star. Yes, I did. Next on my list was 
The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filial. I listened to that and it was good. I gave it a four star on Goodreads. And the reason that I gave it a four star was because I, okay, so I listened to it in the car with my mama, right? I have never, ever, excuse me, listened to slash read a book that was so much about sex. And I think in my January wrap up video, I said something along the lines of, I guess that's the point of the book to show that church ladies have feelings too outside of their relationship with their God, with Jesus, so on and so forth. That they are multifaceted, that they are sexual, that they are strong, that they have feelings, that they make mistakes, that they are angry, so on and so forth. I understand that. But it was some of it. I was just like, my mama is in a car, y'all. Like, I, <laughs> what in the world is going on? Next on the list, we have Heavy by Keith. I believe that's how you say his name, Keith Lehman. It is his memoir. I also gave this a four star. It is such a good book and I highly recommend you listening to it. To hear him tell his own story, to hear the inflation in his voice, it just was so good. I really do enjoy a really good memoir every once in a while because I feel like it... How, how do you know about other people? How do you know other things if you don't seek that information, right? If you don't talk to people, if you don't travel, so on and so forth. But I think another good way is a good memoir. There, you will hear me say time and again that I get tired of certain types of memoirs because they all have the same kind of layout where it's like, oh, their life was terrible and then they like found Jesus or had this come into God spirituality moment. And then now they're saved and a rich and all this other stuff. And I feel like memoirs sometimes can, they can kind of force the idea that you have to suffer in order to get to this place where things in your life are good, right? And I don't necessarily like that thought process because you don't have to suffer. You can have all things with ease. And I think suffering is also a, it's perspective, right? Because what I deem as suffering, you may not necessarily deem it as suffering, so on and so forth. But I just don't like that thought process to make people think that they have to go through so much in order to have a nice life when you don't, right? Some things are out of your control. Um, some things you can't help. Um, but you don't have to suffer. Does that make sense? Anyway, next we had, I read As the Wicked Watch. That was a Patreon book club pick. Um, I gave this book a three star. I didn't really, it wasn't, it wasn't my jam. It was okay, but I felt like it was more about the reporter than it was about the actual case um whereas it was the synopsis makes it seem like it's going to be a book about um this black woman who's a reporter shining the light on these cases that aren't getting the attention that they need when really i felt like it was more about her the the main character's life and how she felt like she was inadequate and how she was trying to prove that she was a good reporter and so on and so forth. It just, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. <sighs> Next, we had Will by Will Smith. I gave this a four star. Um, it was good. I think it really shined light, shone a light on him. I feel like, okay, I've always been a Will Smith fan. I feel like for years I felt like he was weird and I couldn't pinpoint what the weirdness was. And after reading his book, I'm realizing that he has had to put on an act all of his life because that was his defense mechanism and that is how he protected himself. So maybe that's the vibe that I was getting from him um, over all these years. But there are some gems in that book. I feel like that's one of those where I feel like it should be a must read because he really talks about a lot of um 
different things that I feel like we all need. Um, and he shines a light on how your family dynamic affects who you are as a person. And I think that's important. And I don't think we realize enough the things that we share and the things that we don't share with your children, with your other family, so on and so forth, really affects them later on in life and why they do things and how they do things. And we can't necessarily control how people internalize things, right? Because I always like to say, I'm responsible for what I say. I'm not responsible for how you perceive it. Because your level of understanding is never going to be my fault. I can't control that. But I can control my intent. I can control how I choose to say things, so on and so forth. So like he, he talks in the book about his grandmother and the way that she would look at him when he would perform in church. Like when he would say his Easter speech and play the piano or whatever the case, whatever it was he was doing, singing or whatever. And like how he looked, like how she looked at him, like he wanted that feeling forever, right? But how that also turned into him looking for that feeling in every woman he encountered in his life now was that his grandmother's intention absolutely not she was just proud of her grandbaby but you it's like we somehow have to be aware of those things right like how how can this look beyond me right so I think it was a really good book I think it's a must read um for all of us next we have <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me a Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This is a reimagining of Dracula's Brides. I loved this book. It's a short read. Um, I gave it a four star. Um, I think because, I, not I think, I know. I gave it a four star because there were bits and pieces in the book that kind of just dragged on. Um, and reading it, it was just like, okay, I want to get to the, I want to get to the part. Like, I want to get to the good stuff. Um, but I really enjoyed it. If you if you like fantasy, if you are a fan of Dracula, if you like time pieces, um, because this is very much like a historical fantasy, I would call it, um, then you'll really, really enjoy this book. Um, it was interesting. It gave me that like vampire um elegantness that comes with vampires that like sexy dark you know vibe that you get from vampires I've okay listen all right I can't admit this with you guys because you're my friends and you're not gonna judge me but I would date a vampire as a fan of true blood I had a thing for Eric Northman oh oh and the werewolf what, what was his name Alcee girl, girl let me tell you something if I could go on down to the place and like build me a man, oh, if I could build me a man, who would he look like? He would be, it's a dude that I recently started following on the TikTok. I forget what his name is, but if I remember to put a picture, I'll put a picture. It would look like him and he'd be a werewolf. I don't want him to be a vampire, but he would be a werewolf. Yes. Or the fame. I think I need to revisit True Blood. Do you know True Blood was good. The se the books were good. The show was good. I might have to revisit that. But anyway, um, A Diary of Blood was very, very good. After that, I read A More Perfect Union by Tammy Huff, which is about a slave that falls in love with an Irish immigrant. Um, and what did I rate this book? I probably gave it a three or a four star. I gave it a four star. I gave it a four star because the story itself was good. The reason it didn't get a five star for me is because there's kind of this conflict between, I can't remember their names right now, but the slave and the Irish gentleman that comes up that implies that what he went through and slavery are like similar and it's not and two things can be true at once right I think 
as a society, as people, we need to do a better job at embracing complexity. We need to do a better job at knowing that everything is not going to have a definitive answer even when we want it to. Things are going to be difficult and that is okay. It doesn't mean that I'm not smart. It doesn't mean that you're not smart. It just means that this is something that we can't necessarily tackle or that it needs, we need more time. <laughs> we need more information, whatever the case may be. Because what he went through was bad, not only for himself, but generationally, right? I'm not taking away from that. But slavery is completely different from what he went through. Do you understand? Because he still had his free will. He still could go where it was he wanted to. Of course, he experienced famine, so on and so forth. But he could get up and, and go somewhere. He could figure it out, even though it was really hard for him to do that. And the, the trauma that comes along with that, with losing his family and so on and so forth. But it does not compare the two things are very different and they're horrible things in their own ways, right? But they don't have to be compared. Um, and I think from his perspective, he could relate to her um, because they had experienced true things. But then that's the other thing that, that made me upset was, did he care about her because he cared about her or did he care about her because there was a trauma bond, right? Like, you can't love me and ignore the fact that I am black. Let me say that again for the people in the back of the church. You cannot love me and ignore the fact that I am black. Because I will always be a black woman before I am Shelby, the book lover. I will always be a black woman first. So it's like, he... I, it was just a lot going on in that book that made me think about a lot of different things um and you know the the experiences or lack thereof that you could have in an interracial relationship the wherewithal that you have to have in an interracial relationship and so on and so forth so good read the writing was good i would definitely read more from that author um it was just it was interesting um, next we had Yonder by Jabari Sim, which I absolutely adored. It was such a good book. There was like touches of magical realism. I think my favorite part, this is something else. I did a book review for this. Um, it depicted slaves as people that had characteristics other than just being a slave. Like they were smart they were strong and not just strong in the sense of oh they endured all of these things but like physically strong they were um emotional they loved they wanted to be loved they had imaginations they they just were more than just a slave they were more than that they were mean they were traumatized they were they were all of these things and that was so cool to me because i think um, I think over the years, the more that we learn about slavery, the more that we, um, talk about it and understand the ramifications of it and so on and so forth, the less we realize that they were people. They had families, they had concerns, they had feelings, they were talented they could sing, they loved music, they could cook really well. And not because they were forced to, but because it was their innate talent. It's because that, that that's just who they were. I feel like that gets lost in translation. Um, and I read a lot of books about slavery, right? I've read a lot of historical fiction because I actually really, really enjoy it. And it is actually the only way that I feel like I can read about slavery and sort of honor my ancestors in a way that is not nonfiction, um, but that's a different conversation for a different day. So I absolutely loved, I loved Yonder. Um, the only thing that I would take away from that, that, that I did not enjoy about that book was the bit of magical realism that was in there came and gone in a blip. I wanted more. I wanted more of that. Um, next, we have Don't Cry For Me by Daniel Black, which y'all know I loved that book. Um, I did a review on that as well. If you guys want to see that, I absolutely loved it. 
um I love books that have different types of like it has a different concept right and the idea of a black man writing to his son about his life about his history and so on and so forth is so I don't want to say far-fetched but it's different and that's important to me um so that was good I gave that a five star And then, last but certainly not least, we had Perfect Peace, which I did enjoy. I think I wanted um, a little bit more about the main character. Um, but other than that, I thought Perfect Peace was a really, 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 really good book. Out of all of these, I want to say four of them were audiobooks. Um, that counts as reading, too. Um... And my favorites were The Stationery Shop, Yonder, Don't Cry For Me, and Perfect Peace. So, let me know how your first quarter of the year was with your reading. Um, did you read any of these books with me? Do you plan to get them for yourself? Just about all of these you can purchase from ShelbyInTheBookstore.com. The link for the store is in the underneath the bar. And I will talk to y'all soon. If no one has told you today, I love you. And you are kind, you are smart, you are important, and you are well-read. How about that? I think I need to put that on a shirt. What do y'all think? I think I need to put that on a shirt. <laughs> Anyways, I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye.